Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing today? It's still March 9th, 2022. And today we're going to look at the spring and autumn, a story of China. Now, this is a little bit of a smaller game. Um, I'm a little surprised at how small it is doing, but right now it's at $35,000. Uh, with 14 days to go, and it's a goal of $45,000. So it looks like it will probably fund. So let's take a look at it. There's some things that I really like about the game. Number one, it's a 4X game. It's set in ancient China, which has some really fun uh, feel and energy to it. So I really like that. Um, a 4X game, um, I wrote this down, I wanted to go check it out, is about exploration, ex let's see, expansion, exploitation, exploration and extermination so throw all that crap out the window you know it's starcraft it's world of warcraft right it's not world of warcraft it's warcraft it's those early game remember age of empires it's a game where you get a little piece of land and you build a building you build a barracks you start putting out soldiers you're putting out peasants and then you build up and then you explore right and then you just exploit the hell out of the forest by chopping it down you know mining everything building your war machine building your soldiers and then you go out and uh, the the fourth e is exterminate and you do war right so it sounds like a fun game. Now, one thing I didn't like about it was uh, the way you scored where you had these objective cards. You had objectives to do, and that's how you scored. So having played those games, those old games, you know, Age of Empires and that kind of a feel, I, I never understand when some of these games come up with some kind of a different uh, win category and i know there's different win categories uh a big game that did this was heroes of land air and sea which i really like that game but i still as far as i'm kind of concerned the only way to really win is to exterminate you right just crush you um i'm not sure in terms of game design whether that actually works because in uh against the computer you know, in uh, like Age of Empires. Let's just use Age of Empires, right? Um, but it works for StarCraft. It also works for uh, War Warcraft. Anytime you get, you could get into this protracted game. Maybe it's a risk game. Like it takes forever to finish. But in those computer games, usually, you know, once you crush them to a certain degree, you know, whoop, they, the flag goes up, the sound goes, and they, they surrender, right? I don't know how that would work if you were playing against other people. Um, so maybe that's why they put those point things in. I'm trying to do some thinking of why it's not all just, I crush you, crush your enemy. And so, okay. Now, one of the cool things that they do have is that, now let's take a look at the prices. It's about 75 bucks for the base game. That sounds pretty cool. It'll be another 25 with shipping. Now, if you want the miniatures, you can have 340 plus miniatures, which is another hundred bucks. So this box of minis is a hundred bucks. And you get 50 infantry, 50 cavalry, 50 archers, 50 junks, 50 heroes, and then a lot of buildings. Uh, the diversity of that isn't the greatest in the world. And I'm going to tell you something right now, which is a little uh, unfair, I'm going to say. So I'm being fair to say it's unfair. Sitting right over there, and you can't see it right now, is on the table is the Great Wall by Awakened Realms. And I've been learning to play it. And the miniatures for that game are just fantastic. Of course, I paid more than $175 for it, but not for the base game. So I'm not sure about the value of these miniatures. And maybe that's another reason why, you know, this is a smaller publisher. It's a, uh, maybe that's why that value is so low. Anyways, it's a 4X game. I'm immediately interested, okay? China, I'm immediately interested. I like this extra box of miniatures. It's expensive, so it seems a little bit too much. It's based on a Hellenica system. I've never played that, so that doesn't make any sense to me. I watched a video by Mark Steed over at the Dice Tower, and I liked the I liked the mechanics of the game. I liked the way it looked. And so I would love for you, if you're interested, oh, here's some extra bundles. Look at this. They got, you can get the Hellenica game, right? Let's go over to, so here's the BGG page. What is that thing called? Hellenica. Okay, let's go see what that game's like. Alenica. Story of Greece. So this came out in 2019. It's got a 7.9. How many ratings? 273. That's not many at all. Um, same uh, designer. Um, so it's got it's got some following. Let's go look on Kickstarter. See if it was a Kickstarter project. Stick with me. See if this helps you kind of decide whether you want to get this game. 
Hellenica. Well, well, maybe not. Story of Greece. Story of, there it is. It's going to show up. Okay, so this is their previous game. Uh, they had 1,600 backers. They made 166,000. So they're pretty good, you know, uh, pretty solid, pretty solid outing uh, using kind of the same system, a Greek feel, uh, and now they're doing it in China. Hey, for me, this is just kind of a maybe at the moment, right? It's early. We still have uh, 15 more days. I'll keep an eye on it. Oh, that didn't help, did it? Anyways, uh, we have lost it. Oh, that's the video. They had a friend do a video for it. Well, We'll take that as a sign to end the video. But what do you think about it? What do you think about it? Now, there's I'm suspecting there's a small group of people who like Hellenica and are interested in this. One thing I don't see very well right here is that they just don't seem to be advertising too well. Um, I really found out about this on an obscure, uh, from an obscure place. I mean, it wasn't completely obscure, but a smaller place. And it just mentioned it in passing. And I've looked around and I haven't heard anyone else mention it. So it's not getting any buzz right now. It didn't show up in my Facebook or Instagram feeds. So I don't know. It's got kind of a cool feel to it. It's the kind of game I'd be interested in playing. You know, but I don't think I'm, I'm holding off judgment, but I don't think I'm going to buy it. Right. I'm certainly not going to buy it on the Kickstarter. It looks good, but it's, unless I hear from some of you guys or some other people and I see some playthroughs and some things, I don't like to watch playthroughs, but get some more reviews. It's an iffy thing for me. I definitely want to play it, though. It's a definite play. Like, I would play that right now. There, that's that kind of interest. But for some reason, there's that holdback and wanting to spend money on it. So, I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about when it comes to games. Like, some are just, yeah. And I said this in a previous video, and so I'm kind of, like, using this as my gauge lately. Like, is it a hell yeah? Is it a oh yeah? And it's not. So, that's honest. So, if anyone out there that has a hell yeah, I'd love to hear from you because you might have information I don't have, and your energy might be infectious. Okay, everybody, story of, I wonder if we can go back to it so we can get one last look at it. Spring and Autumn, Story of China. It's going to come out in 2023. It's by Mr. B Games. It's designed by Scott Demers, Demers, and it looks pretty interesting, and it actually looks like a game I want to play, but in this discerning day and age, I'm not really sure I want to pull the trigger on buying it. 